and meet the man who's been here the longest tonight. He arrived the first to set up his piano. He was playing when you arrived in the door and he's going to close out the session with some wonderful playing on the piano. He's the musical director of Celtic Thunder, amongst other things. He's played with huge names, including uh, Sinead O'Connor and uh, Brian Kennedy and the Dubliners. And uh, so we're very pleased that he would come and play with us tonight. Uh, his name is David Munro. Will you please put your hands together for him? Stand here for a second. We'll have a quick chat and then we'll let you play. Fantastic. Thank you. I, I Welcome and thank you. Isn't it amazing this microphone hasn't moved at all all night? It's, it's been <laughs> just right for everyone. <laughs> You've been uh, an absolute gentleman, I have to say, not just tonight, but uh, in the run-up to the show and practising with some of the singers. And uh, I know you're used to performing on a much higher level, uh, but you've been very gracious with your talents and your patience. Performing is performing. doesn't matter where it is. Now, I know I said, uh, said things earlier on about people from Drimna who are my friends, but they just happen to kick football more than to read books. People have got offended, but anyway, it just does happen. Now, you're from Glasgow. Yes. Do people read books or do they play football or do they play the piano over there? Well, <laughs> they read books about football. <laughs> I, I remember what, actually years ago when Graham Soonis was the manager of Rangers, uh, a friend of mine was doing a survey for, a, a, for some survey association and one of the questions was, who is the most influential person in your life? And when they were in this area of Glasgow, they all said Graham Soonis. Yeah, I don't know how that works. I've never, I, nobody's ever met him, you know, but like, so the, the football mad. But Not so much in, in reading. But what happened to you? I, I just don't picture your boy sitting in the middle of Glasgow growing up and practicing their scales and their arpeggios. No, I didn't. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, I grew up in a very non musical house and I've got a twin sister who doesn't play a note. So uh, there's no accounting for it. I mean, I could always play when I had tunes on television, I'd go to the piano and just be able to play them, so I, I've never analysed it. It's... And were you formally trained? Oh, I have been, yeah, I went, I went to Glasgow University. Right, right, right. But it just came naturally to you as a child? Yes. Right. But, I mean, like, when you go to university, you suddenly meet hundreds of other people who, who've got natural ability. Uh, you know, ability to just gets all over the threshold. Uh, you have to work at it to, to make something of it. Tell us sort of about Celtic Thunder, because even though it's a very, very big show, it's not that well known in Ireland. Uh, so Celtic Thunder is, if you're familiar with American television, PBS is uh, one of the few um, forms of television in America where there's no advertising. So PBS is a really valued commodity amongst performers. Uh, Donald Trump did his best to try and uh, slash the funding for public broadcasting and you know there's no advertising involved in it but PBS has a, a, a kind of a, a family quality feeling in America. Celtic Women uh, is, is a, sort of the, 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 the gender opposite of Celtic Thunder so uh, they've been putting out classic Irish songs all dolled up with orchestras for years so I do the same with uh, a bunch of gentlemen uh, and, and so it's, it's very big and it's probably shown in America every day of the year somewhere. But they're, they're like a, almost like a boy band, they're a bunch of fine strapping Irish fellas who yeah. sing kind of Macon and Clancy numbers, would that be right? Well, no, that's, that's more the High Kings, it's, 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 it's a little classy, I call it Celtic crossover because it's like classical crossover but we do classic Irish songs in a way that works for PBS. And you are the musical director? And the producer, yes. And the so. producer, so you arrange the songs, you tell people where to sing, you bring in the instruments, that sort of thing. Yeah. Arrange all the orchestra orchestrations and uh, the, the tone of each album is set as well. And how many albums would they've done? Oh, I think we're on to we're about twenty now. And how many shows did you do a year? Well, I've just come back, back I'm still jet lagged, so <laughs> I'm a bit cross-eyed tonight. Yeah. Uh, we probably do about ninety shows a year in America or Australia, is the other big territory. Right. So you're crisscrossing. America for months at a time. Really yes. Right? Yeah. So you're, yeah. you're you're like a like the old style circus. You're on the road the whole it's time. The circus, yeah. And, and how many people are in the show? Like how many people are in the circus? About thirty people on tour. 
all, all together uh, and we, we travel in tour buses, we'll live on the bus and then there's uh, two or three uh, big articulated lorries that bring the show with us. So nice, nice. that's great fun. <laughs> so I mentioned in the intro uh, you've played with a lot of big names, uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit, a bit about them. Sinead obviously is, uh, is, is, is an outstanding name. What, what did you do with Sinead? Well, there's a songwriter called Jimmy McCarthy, who you'll probably know. Uh, Jimmy wrote a song uh, many years ago called The Contender, about Jack Doyle, who was a, a heavyweight boxer, a world champion. An amazing man, had an amazing life. Uh, he married a woman called Movita, who he lost to Marlon, Marlon, Marlon Brando. Brando. <laughs> uh, but Jack Doyle, not only was he an amazing boxer, he was a fantastic singer as well and he filled Wembley Stadium for boxing and then subsequently came back and filled it again as a singer so uh, the contender is about Jack Doyle who subsequently died in the early 70s uh, an alcoholic down and out uh, in the streets of London still well loved but you know he couldn't really keep it together so you were going to play so that song Jimmy Jimmy had written a, a lot of other songs run about the, uh, the story of Jack Doyle's life and we were trying to put a show together, a musical together and uh, Jimmy being Jimmy was able to put out a few calls to people and suddenly we had Sinead O'Connor in the studio, uh, Mary Coughlin, the other one, and um, an actor, I can't remember the actor's name, I, I told you his name. Uh, has anyone seen the film where Julia Roberts is in is The Enemy Within? Patrick Bergen, Bergen yes. Right Patrick Bergen. Somebody give him a book. Yeah. <laughs> so that, 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 we, we all ended up in the studio together. So, um, how was Sinead like them? Uh, well, I'll tell you what, I mean, she, she could be difficult if she wanted to be, but I had absolutely no trouble with her. And I find that the higher you go up the food chain, the less trouble you have with uh, with people telling them what to do, because I suddenly found myself in a situation where she was looking for direction. She was saying, "What what what am I to do?" I mean, I've got a background in theatre. She doesn't. She's a pop singer, and so she was taking direction from me. So it was quite uh, a, a strange, sort of intimidating situation for me to be in. But I. She, she sang so quietly I couldn't actually, I had to stop a few times because I wasn't sure she was singing. But then when I heard the takes back, I mean, she's got an incredibly sensitive approach to everything. She got under under the, the, the words of the song and she told it like no one else could and uh, an incredible talent. Not a big personality when you close up on her, you would think she would dominate the room. She was quiet as a mouse. Patrick Bergen did all the talking. One second. Go. Here come the ads. You are a classical uh, yeah. pianist as well. Yeah. You have a classical album. Yeah. I'm telling you this as if you didn't know. <laughs> but I'm also telling the... Gold medals are stating the obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about this uh, CD. Well, this... Uh, I have to thank my wife for this. Heidi's sitting there. Uh, because I, I've spent my life... Uh, working for other people, producing for them, writing for them, or trying to make them sound good, or trying to help tell their stories. And I've also composed, I was a composer with an opera company for many years as well, so I've written a lot of uh, opera stuff. And uh, I was pushed and pushed and pushed by my wife to uh, write something, she said, crying out loud, you write something for yourself. I've never really done it. I always work to commission. Somebody hands me a script or a, a libretto. I go away and write, write it. But I'd never actually had the motivation to write something that I wanted. So this is the result of uh, being pressed <laughs> into service and uh, coming up with some of my own thoughts, which I, I've written as musical thoughts. So who would like a copy of David's musical thoughts? <laughs> Who has a CD player anymore? Well, that's that's a better question. I'm going to start with Paul and Roisin and hand these over and keep handing them until they run out. And if you still want more, we've a few more to go, okay? <laughs> so, ooh. this side of the room, take one and pass it on if you wish. 
Don't worry, we, we've got a coffee table at home made of the boxes of these. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to the very last segment of the show. Uh, we have three lovely singers. Uh, we're going to start off with Helena. Helena, if you'd like to come to the stage. And David, you're going to take to the mic. Helena, what are you going to sing? I'm going to sing uh, the Edith Piaf song, La Vie en Rose. We need a bit of love. Les yeux qui font baisser les miens, le rire qui se perd sur sa bouche. Voilà les portraits, sont les touches. Je l'aime à quel j'appartiens. Magic spell you cast. This is La Violosa. When you kiss me, heaven sighs. And though I close my eyes, I see La Violosa. When you press me to your heart, I'm in a world. Apart, a world where roses bloom, and when you speak, angels sing from above. Everyday words seem to turn into love songs. Give your heart and soul to me, and life will always. I'm going to sing this evening is called That's Okay. So I'm going to sing That's Okay and you're going to repeat to me That's Okay and then you're going to turn to your neighbour, your lover, your lover to be, someone you fist punched this evening and you're going to say Cause so are you. Let me hear you. How are you? That's okay. That's okay. Cause so are you. So are you. Oh, you're so brilliant. I'm chaotic. 
exotic, tiny bits, I got it, that's okay, that's okay, cause so are you, so are you, troublemaker, heartbreaker, and a booty shaker, that's okay, that's okay, cause so are you, so are you, We're different yet the same, we're all playing a game, Of a stinker, that's okay. That's okay. Cause so are you. So are you. Rageous, contagious, tiny bit contagious. That's okay. That's okay. Cause so are you. So are you. Different yet the same. We're all playing a game. Chancer, a dancer, bit of a romancer, that's okay, that's okay, cause so are you, so are you. I'm outrageous, contagious, tiny bit contagious, I'm going to sing that one again. <laughs> that's okay. Deep thinker, hard drinker, bit of a stinker. That's okay. That's okay. Cause so are you. Cause so are you. I'm a trier, a liar, a singer in a choir. That's okay. That's okay. Cause so are you. Cause so are you. These things make us all some. Make us fall. The rules change and move. But together we're in the groove. I'm a messer, aggressor, even a cross dresser. That's okay. Cause so are you. So are you. I'm mad, I'm glad, tiny bit sad. That's okay. That's okay. Cause so are you. Got the gist of this song. More verses be too long. Just know we're all the same. Life's a game just played in different ways. I'm refined, I'm kind, I'm tiny bit behind, but that's okay. Cause so are you. I'm a diva, believer, underachiever. That's okay. That's okay. Cause so are you. That's so are you. I said, that's okay. That's okay. Cause so are you. That's so are you. I said, that's okay. That's okay. Cause so are you and you and you and you and you. Thank you for that. Excellent. Excellent. That was okay. Yeah, that was okay. Um, there is one thing that uh, Joyce forgot to tell you about that song, and that is that she wrote it. <laughs> And I'm just amazed, um, you guys met for the first time tonight, right? Yeah. Did you practice, you practiced just on the phone? Ten to seven. Ten to seven. <laughs> I, I just find it amazing that you can, the, the compliment is so wonderful and, and brings such great life to the song. It's, it's almost like you guys have been playing together for years, you know? <laughs> yeah. We have one more contributor, as in... Uh, a person who's going to sing as David plays. Uh, her name is Kira Sedine. And uh, Kira, would you like to join us? One, two. 
Thanks so much. I'm a Dublin 7 imposter. <laughs> so thank you for allowing me in and to rise one rung on the Dublin ladder. <laughs> it's been an amazing night. I'm just blown away. I was absolutely blown away by Kiev. I've known him since he was a little baby and I have, you know, seen his journey with his amazing mom, Adrian. And watching that was just one of the most moving things I have ever seen. It was incredible. I think he's an absolute star. <laughs> Thanks so much, Jerry, for asking me. And um, I'm gonna, I may have got this wrong, but I thought that there was a, an idea to bring a little bit of Christmas in to the evening. So I know it's early, and I'm sorry if this is a little bit early for some of you. I am a Christmas resistor myself, so I understand. And this um, song is actually about that. So we're going to do River by Johnny Mitchell. <laughs> this moment and 
you know, in time outside of Dublin and in Dublin that um, maybe Mary isn't exactly how, how we feel, but this I sing it in the spirit of hope and of connection and, you know, we live in an amazing, amazing city and I know that we're all part of that, everybody who's part of it, um, this is a Merry Christmas. Professionally, do you? I, I do. Tell, Sometimes. Where can people Sometimes see you? Sometimes more so than others. <laughs> where, where can people see or hear you? Um, so, Kira Sedine is the name. So, if you go on social media, you can pick up on gigs there. And um, yeah, I perform in different places. I have a show that will be playing next year and touring next year. So, yeah, it would be it would be lovely to see you. Okay. Remember the name, folks. Kira Sedine. Thank you so much. That's beautiful. Thanks. Folks, we're way past time, way past time, and I wanted to finish off with something very, very peaceful. Um, last year we finished off with Silent Night, Holy Night, and, uh, and then after various discussion we, we came up with a slightly different idea. Um, and I suppose, you know, we, we covered a huge amount of ground tonight from the awfulness that's happening in Gaza and Ukraine. Uh, we talked a little bit about what happened in Dublin yesterday. Uh, we met a man who had been detained in Guantanamo, and uh, we met another man who, for terrible, terrible biological reasons, has been imprisoned for a long time as well. That was, of course, Queeve. So it's an opportunity to maybe just think about it. Um, if you pray, maybe try praying now. If you meditate, maybe you should meditate. But And if not, just enjoy the music. Uh, I asked David maybe if you could do the Moonlight Sonata by Beethoven, and that would close out the night. Would that be okay? Oh, thank you.
can I thank everybody? It's gone on a little bit longer than we expected, but I hope you found it worthwhile. We had a wonderful night. We met a lot of very interesting people, and we met some really talented people. Um, and thank you to Michael, and to Leslie, and to Jenny, and to my own daughter Ella, who did the door, and of course the staff here. It's been a wonderful night, and I'd like to wish you all a very, very happy Christmas. Good night. Thank you.